job interviews, you're hired, you start Monday, college parties, <laughs> and uh, it, it's like man. he gets sick of it, and releases all of his traits. <laughs> Ooh boy, this was a stinky one. Look, I'm the guy who dug Ayato's quest and is a defender of story quests in general. If you want to call looking at the quality of writing being a defender, to be fair, but um, this one, well, this quest, uh. <laughs> It was special. So let me explain why. But first, you can explain to me, why haven't you subscribed yet? Tell me now! Oh, and by the way, we hit 10K! <laughs> I literally can't believe it. And I'm so incredibly thankful to all of you. 10K is a number I never thought I'd reach for literally years because Believe it or not, for a lot of YouTubers, it takes a really long time to hit that type of number. So thank you so much. And if you want me to do like a question and answer video or something, uh, leave me a question in the comments here and I'll see if I can respond to it in a future video. Also, you know what 10K means? Well, it means this video is sponsored <laughs> by Surfshark VPN. A VPN is a virtual private network and using Surfshark will allow you to change your region to watch shows even if you're not in the region where it's available. Which like, if you're anything like me and you like uh, a bunch of shows, it's definitely helpful. But that's not all Surfshark does. It makes what you do online private as well, since using a VPN encrypts your data so it keeps your information hidden from hackers. So if you're wanting to try out shows not available in your region or you're trying to stay safe online, which you should be, try out Surfshark VPN. Click the link below in the description and enter promo code MAVERICK and you'll get a whopping 83% off and three extra months. And until July 4th, you'll also get a free antivirus. And all this helps me out too, which is awesome and incredible. And again, that's promo code MAVERICK. And thanks again, Surfshark VPN for sponsoring this video. All right, I'm awake now. Let's talk Genshin. Last video, I spoke about the stellar main quest, a quest that quite possibly was the greatest quest in the game. So trust me when I say that I really wanted to stay on that high instead of seeing whatever fucking bad trip this is. And hey, I'm a reserved, fair guy. So like always, I wanna talk about the pros, cons, storytelling techniques, fairly and with a neutral stand. Oh, who the fuck am I kidding? This quest sucks. Yelon was a standout character during the previous Archon quest. She was fun, mysterious, and most importantly, fully formed because her introduction was done so well. She was given subtle hints about her character's mindset and wants, but also given a nice, natural explanation of her past, which is a total reversal of whatever the hell is going on in this quest. This quest felt like a drawn out world quest, not a Yelon story quest. I've said before that what I find foundational about character quests is delving deeper into the characters that they're about. This should be obvious, and I'm sure some of you hearing me state again are like, duh, but the issue is that clearly the writers don't understand this. So, have you finished reading the manifesto? <laughs> or at least a team of them don't. Which like, I have a theory that there are clearly different writing teams that are given writing work over different quests, but that's a theory for a different day. The only thing we get about Yelon in this quest is that she works with some people, she's always skeptical of people, something we already knew, and she's interested in the Fatui. So things we could have learned about her in like five minutes naturally, not in an incredibly long movie length character quest. If anything, this quest felt more like a Ganyu Act 2 quest in terms of the plot. We're following a character that was introduced in Ganyu's first act, and nothing plot wise here would be negated by Ganyu being the replacement. If anything, some things make more sense with this being Ganyu, like being the one to pick the next Tianshu. We've also seen Ganyu do investigations before too, in her first act, so it wouldn't be unusual here. In my last video, I had some people offer some different opinions on whether or not Yanfei was purposeful in the last quest. And while I still don't agree that she was, I definitely see where those people are coming from. But this quest is a heightened version of what we got there. I would say that I'm certain Yelon isn't needed here. And obviously that's a huge issue because, well, this is her quest. And the really sad part about all of this is, we're wasting a great character here. Now, the best part of this quest is its ending. Wait, I didn't mean it like that. Well, okay, I sort of did. At the end of the quest, a new harbinger is name dropped. 
Regrader. Seems he was behind the scenes in the opposite direction to our party, doing essentially what Yelon was doing, but for the Fatui. Well, you know what would be a good idea for a quest? Do a character quest where Regrader is introduced and we have to infiltrate a sect of the Fatui with Yelon. Seeing as how Yelon had a section in this quest where she's undercover and lies to a bunch of people, but instead of it being lying to some layman and a child, super impressive, Yelon, have it be us going undercover into the Fatui. Yes, this is a different plot <laughs> altogether, but based on the character that Yelon is, it very clearly suits her way more than this Ganyu quest does. I think Yelon requires a plot entirely different than the one that was given to her here. Usually I side with keeping the plot of a quest the same, but tweaking the issues to make it better. But this quest has so many issues that I think it should have just been scrapped altogether or again given to someone else like Ganyu. Speaking of the Fatui, so you're telling me that the same writers that don't include named characters into every quest, likely because they want the world to feel larger, are the same writers that include the Fatui as the main enemy and like, no joke, probably around 85% of quests in this game? It's so lazy and boring. We already have so many quests of the Fatui trying to infiltrate the political landscape of a region. They feel like fucking Team Rocket now. Like, we get it, we're not going to forget that the Fatui are sowing chaos and are currently one of the main enemy factions in the game. We get it. And we'll likely also have them as the main enemy in Sumeru too. Again, if we're going to have the Fatui be the enemy behind the scenes here, have it be in a way that we haven't seen before. We've seen the Fatui use lay people to get what they want. It's nothing new here. Speaking of the lay people, the villain here is dull. He's fun at the very end of the quest when he truly becomes this pragmatic, egoist monster. I really like that idea, but it lasts for approximately like three minutes until he's thwarted. The issue here is also about status. The themes of this quest are ultimately about how the underprivileged feel forced to climb their way up the social ladder by doing nefarious things. But then the quest goes against those themes. Hear me out. Our villain here grew up in poverty and in a terrible family environment. As a result, he wanted to get away from that in any way possible and to live a better life. He meets the Tianshu and realizes that this is his opportunity. So he works with the Fatui. All right, so far, so good. But it turns out that the Tianshu really was looking out for our villain here and was actually interested in helping him regardless of his social standing. But like, what exactly does this tell us now? That the poor don't need to do more social maneuvering in leeway to get ahead? Or that only in this instance there was someone in power who was nice? What exactly am I supposed to get from all of this? Maybe it's the idea that power corrupts people? I mean, that's a nice idea and all, but we have characters that aren't corrupted from their power in leeway. So like, is the quest about keeping the poor poor? <laughs> Like, I know that's not what this quest is saying, but that's because it's not really saying anything coherent at all. And hold up, have you noticed yet what I haven't mentioned? Or rather, who? <laughs> well, well, yeah, I haven't mentioned Zhao, but look, like he's, he's not, he, are you listening to me? I didn't even mention Yelon because, well, she doesn't connect to these themes at all. Is Yelon someone who grew up poor and decided to walk a different path? Is she someone who was corrupted by power once? Who knows, but this quest definitely doesn't tell us or hint at it. The biggest stretch you could make is that Yelon is showing us that people really can't be trusted. So keep poor people poor and trust nobody. <laughs> Let's also talk about the premise and plot here. Notice how the focus of this plot is on the people being interviewed for the Tianshu position and the Tianshu himself. Imagine if instead we're tasked with interviewing them, not with Yelon, and one of the interviewees is Yelon. She doesn't want the job, but is interviewing to get close to the guy who's working with the Fatui. That way we get to have more one-on-one -on -one substantial interactions with Yelon and maybe learn if she has any thematic relevance to our villain here. An apt comparison is the Ayato quest again. In Ayato's quest, we come to learn why Ayato cares about his investigation, and it turns out to lead us to learning more about him and what he cares about. Here here though, like, what? Yelon cares about thwarting the Fatui? Like, join the fucking club because it seems like everybody and their mom hates the Fatui at this point. Mom?
What are you doing here? Hey, sweetie, can you lend me $5? Ooh, get your dirty little poor hands off me. Thanks, Genshin. So yeah, this quest had a boring and predictable plot, jumbled messy themes that don't relate to the focal character at all, Team Rocket was brought back for the 50th time, and they absolutely misused a fantastic character who isn't going to get an Act 2 quest for like, I don't know, probably four years or something. <laughs> also, doesn't tell us anywhere about the world itself, so even if it was a world quest, it's pretty boring. So to become a Qixing, you go through a... A normal job interview with an essay. So, for you to get the job of story writer, let me know how you would have written or changed this quest in the comments. We can all be our own little writer's room together. Also, if you like good writing, check out my video over the anime spy family on my other channel. And here's the last Genshin video, if you missed it, over the best quest in the game, which was very different than this one. Again, I hope we get more quests like the last one, and a lot less quests like this one in the future. But regardless, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.